Well, there you have it, 2 0 loss. Um, we was all on about not being embarrassed, not being on the receiving end of a, of a big score island. That we that we wasn't. That's what I can say. Um, it's difficult to pick out too much positives from a performance like that, but I think it's important that we don't go overboard and maybe be overcritical. And that's not lowering expectations. That's just a realistic um, place to start, really, um, with what I'm about to say. So. I think the first 10 minutes were actually all right in the game. I think we, we, we looked OK, we looked, we looked solid. I think, you know, Liverpool wasn't at their best. But for me, and this was, the, this was almost the most annoying thing for me about this game, is the fact that we concede from a set piece and the manner of the set piece, zonal. And I know people might say, yeah, but then after that, they didn't really do anything from all the corners that they had. I don't care. If we're spending £80 million on Harry Maguire, Right? You cannot tell me that in games like this, when you're playing against a Virgil van Dijk or a, a commanding centre-half who was a massive threat in the air from corners, you're not, you can't tell me that our most expensive signing this summer and captain shouldn't be on him. I don't get it. Or, even if it, or, or Matic. Somebody of physical stature who's good in the air should be on Virgil van Dijk. That is basic black and white. You do not have to have a UEFA... A license, pro license, all of this bullshit to understand that. Virgil van Dijk is fantastic in the air. Let's not give him a free run against Fred Williams and Andreas because they're the they're the, the free the free smaller players that are blocking. And then you've got the big lads in Lindelof, Maguire, and say Matic as the last line in front of De Gea. Why? I don't understand that. It made no sense. And we spoke about it before the, the game. Yes, you can lose here heavily, you can get outclassed, you can get done by a bit of Mane manage, ma magic or a bit of Salah, Super Salah, or whatever it is, you can get done by that. But when you concede after 10 minutes from a corner that could be easily prevented by actually putting someone on Van Dijk, for me, you're asking for trouble. And that's what we saw. And then even from that, we go on to the De Gea situation. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I, I, look, I, I had to look at it a couple of times. I know it was right in front of me and, and I thought straight away it was a foul. But when I looked back at it, I saw the replays at halftime, I was like, on a different day, that might not have been. I think it, it just about it just about wasn't enough, I think. Van Dijk's left shoulder comes across. But on a different day, you don't get those. But OK, fair enough. The right decision was made there. But it, they, they kept getting at us. And, you know, Liverpool, you know what they're like. They started to get at us. And then you're thinking, can we hold firm? And to be fair, we grew back into the game. Towards the end of the first half, I thought we, we, we did OK. Pereira had a shot. Um, that was that was an easy save. He nearly got on the end of a cross. I think it was from Dan James. I can't remember. It was down the other end, so it was hard to see. But he slid in and nearly, nearly got it. Um, so towards the end of the half, I thought we did OK. Into the second half now. Jesus, it should have been four or five. Liverpool come right out the traps. I think Henderson hit the post. Um, Salah had, Mane had a chance. He would have scored on a different day. They were raining on us. And I literally was about to just... I was going to tweet the next goal's incoming, incoming. It felt like it was coming any second. And somehow we managed to weather the storm. Um, and then Pereira's getting into some good, decent positions, um, but was very, very wasteful. I've got a big up Fred. I thought Fred today was, was really good um, in, in, in a very difficult game. I thought he was really good today. I thought his energy was good. I thought the way he used the ball was good. His intensity and his passing was good. I don't want to big up Matic as well. I think Matic did OK. Um, I thought he was commanding. I thought it, at, at times where, 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 where he could, I thought he was composed wherever he could. Um, and then we get that guilt as chance that falls to Martial, man. It, as soon as it, it goes to him, I'm thinking he's going to score. He's going to score. And he blazes it into Rose Ed. And, and I think that sums it up. Fred had a couple of shots as well. Um, one at Allison's near post, which went wide and another way forced to save from Allison. Probably don't want it falling to Fred there. But it just it, it highlighted today all of the problems that we have, especially creatively. We couldn't get that guilt edge chance. And I felt like Liverpool, again, we spoke about it on the road trip on the way up. It's like you can be on top of Liverpool in little periods, but they've always got them gears to go up. They've always got them, you know, the little bit about them that says, well, all right, we're cool. We'll raise it up a notch. And I think we did put them under a little bit of pressure, but I never felt that we would get that proper chance. And when it did come, it only came to Martial. And like I said, he put it over. We huffed and puffed. I think the changes, I would have put Matter on early, earlier. I think the fact that we were contemplating, contemplating whether Matter should have started. And then we saw kind of Pereira struggling for quality wise after getting into great positions. Um, I think that's where maybe the game, I don't want to say was, was, was lost, but I think Matter would have brought a little bit more calmness and, and a bit more astuteness, especially with the decision making, especially with the positions that Pereira got into. And it was about game management, man. Like I said, we, we, we were sitting ducks as soon as you concede after 10 minutes after, after, after a corner. And look, 
I don't want to go too overall. I thought Brandon Williams did well. I thought he showed fight. I thought he showed passion, which is good. One thing I have to say is that I'm not gonna I'm not gonna question that. I won't question that about the players today. I did I, I didn't see players out there bottling it. I didn't see players out there who didn't want it. I just saw players that were far inferior to Liverpool, um, to be honest with you. Um, and now with this Rashford situation where he's saying he's out for two to three months, I mean, they haven't confirmed that yet. But if that's true, it's an absolute disgrace, an absolute disgrace, utter shambles. And it just shows we saw last year the burnout that was caused to Marcus Rashford. We saw it. Now, Marcus Rashford is always going to come out and say, I want to play for Man United. He's always going to put himself through the pain barrier. Players need to be protected from themselves, especially when you're as good a pro as, as, as Marcus Rashford. Oli, the coaching staff, the medical team, they need to be saying, Marcus, mate, you're going to do yourself a worse injury. Take him out the firing line. If you need to take him out for four weeks so we can go and get his injury seen to, go and get this unintrusive, um, unintrusive um, operation that he needs. If, if, you're going to go and, if you're going to take him out for four weeks, a month, month and a half to do that, halfway through the season or early in the season, do it. Do it. I get it, he has to play a lot of games because who else are you going to put in? I get it, it just shows that we're lacking in depth, but you can't allow someone to play through that much pain barrier to only then ruin himself even more. Because now, two to three months without Rashford, McTominay out for a while, Pogba out for a while, Bruno Fernandes still not here. It's not looking good, it's looking very bleak. Now, top four was not going to be decided here today. You know, the fact that the results helped us along the way it kind of gave us a free hit, like what Mars was saying on the way down, on the way up. That if we did lose today, the fact that we're still in it is great. Ch Chelsea lost, and um, you know their next game is Arsenal, Spurs inconsistent, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But if we're looking at ourselves, it's going to be very difficult to replace Marcus Rashford's goals. He's in, no matter what you think, he's in the form of his life. Is Martial going to chip him with more? Is Mason going to step up to to the plate? A lot of pressure on him. I just, I, I, I don't know. The jury's out. The jury's out. So very disappointing here today. It could have been more. I'm not going to blame Dan James um, for the last goal. We were, we, were, we were going for it. I'd rather, I'd rather concede a second going for it like we were trying to, even though we couldn't make that guilt edge chance, than just sit there with Liverpool camp, you know, having us camped in our, in our, in our box with, no, with not asking any questions of them. They answered the questions very easily. Were Liverpool really in trouble? Were Liverpool really at risk of conceding in the last minute? Probably not. It was more the hope that killed us, but at least we gave it a go. It sounds like a bit of a defeatist attitude and a... People might say, Flex, you know, that was a, a shambolic performance. It was this, it was that. I get all the negative sides of the performance. I do, because in parts, we weren't good. In parts, we were completely outplayed. In parts, I thought Liverpool absolutely dominated us. And like I said, especially those first 10, 15 minutes of the first half, it looked like that second goal was coming. But I want to give a little bit of credit where credit's due in very difficult situations. Like I said, I thought Fred stepped up to the plate and got us ticking, got us playing. Um, and we got into some decent positions. We were just wasteful and just not good enough. It's as simple as that. We're miles off Liverpool. And I think these are the games where we need to have a bit of sense about it. We can't, we can't go overboard. I think it was everyone, most United fans, were pretty much looking at a damage limitation job and that is what we got. It was about damage limitation. If Liverpool were at the races fully, we could have lost three or four nil today. Um, let's, let's be real, uh, we, we could have. Um, and, and we set off on a bad foot from the corner. You're always asking for trouble. We said the first half an hour was crucial. We needed to not concede in that half an hour, especially when it wasn't from open play. It, it hurts that bit more. And I think going forward to play, to play zonal marking against, you know, you, you're almost saying to Van Dijk, here you go, mate, here's a clear path to the goal. Because he's going to, barge past Williams, he's going to barge through Fred, he's going to barge through Pereira, which is what happened. And then he rose highest for an easy header. So obviously a disappointing day at the office, but we've got to bounce back against Burnley. Arsenal play Chelsea, there's points to be dropped there. Um, we need to just keep going and, and, and try and find a way out of this um, without, without Rashford. Yes, we've got players who hopefully can step up. It means that there's going to be more game time for Greenwood, which is obviously fantastic. But we, roll, we go on to, to midweek. Disappointing. Peace. Big thank you to you guys for watching the latest of our videos. And if you want to check out more, make sure you do that just to the right of me. We are the biggest and best Manchester United channel in the world. Make sure you check us out on all of the socials as well. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and YouTube. The socials are along the bottom. Peace.